Welcome to LearnHowToQuilt.com. I'm Anne, and this is the fifth video in our star sampler series. Today, you'll learn about this shooting star block. I chose this block not so much because of how it looks, but because it offers a lot of teaching opportunities. Some of the sewing in this block is challenging. It's all straight line sewing, but these angles here can be a little tricky. Also, the pieces in this block can't be cut out using quick cutting methods. You'll have to use templates. Now you might be saying, Ugh, I don't want to use templates, but once you learn how to make those templates, you'll be able to add seam allowance to any block that you choose. And that's a good skill to have. So today we'll be focusing on drafting the block and making those templates. And then in the next video in this series, you'll see how those templates can help with your sewing accuracy. So come on in and let's get started. You can download these patterns at learnhowtoquilt.com under the free patterns tab, or you can click on the link below. The other supplies you'll need are listed on the supply list you'll find below. Before I draft this block today, I want to talk a little bit about graph paper. Graph paper that has dark blue lines separating inches is much easier to work with than graph paper that just has quarter inch squares on it. This is okay, but this works a little bit better. Of course, it's a little bit more expensive, but if you have trouble seeing and counting these lines, it might be worth the extra cost. For some blocks, you might need eighth inch graph paper in order to draft it properly, but for this one, it's not necessary. When you're drafting a block, you should use a mechanical pencil or a very sharpened pencil because you wanna make sure that your pencil line lines up right on that line. Today, I'm gonna to use a pen so you can see these lines if you decide to follow along, but at home, you'll definitely wanna use a mechanical pencil or a very sharpened pencil. So let's say you found an old quilt and you wanna make a block exactly like one of the squares in that quilt. You take your ruler and you measure it. And you can see that this isn't exactly six inches and that's because probably it shrunk when being washed or when it's quilted, sometimes things get out of whack but this is pretty close to six inch block. So I draw a six inch square on my paper to get started. And I like to put FS for finish size so that I know that this six inch square doesn't include seam allowances. Next, I'm gonna look for a grid inside the block. Not all blocks have grids. You can see that it's split through the middle here and here. And so, if I take a six inch block and divide that into two, I see that each one of those sections are going to be three inches. I take my ruler, I move over three inches, put a mark there and there. And as I said earlier, when you go to draw your line, because we're gonna be using this for a template, you wanna make sure that that pencil mark is right on that graph paper line. So I'm using this pen so you can see. So I've got a little leeway here. So that's three inches and I need to find the three inch mark going across. That's there. I'll draw my three inch line. I'm using this ruler, this rotary ruler, and I just noticed it's got a chip in it right there. So rotary rulers aren't such a great ruler to use when you're drafting. I like to use this plastic drafting ruler when drawing on graph paper. Now you can't use this to rotary cut. If you tried to rotary cut alongside of this, it would cut into the ruler. This is just made specifically for drafting your blocks. You can see these red lines here. They're set to line up over the top of these blue lines. Let me get this all lined up and I'll draw that line a little bit better there. And we'll get rid of this ruler. So to get started, I wanna look into one of these squares. 
and I see that there are one, two, three pieces here. This piece starts over here, or it looks like it should start over there. Look, maybe I was off a little. Starts here and comes over on this side. So I know where this is. This is right here, but I'm not sure where I need to end up over here. I'll take my ruler and I'll measure that. And I see that that's close to an inch. And I'm going to look. Oh, that one's close to an inch. That's close to an inch. That's close to an inch. So I'm thinking that this piece probably should be about one inch. And if I look back on the original drawing, I see that it is. It's just, as I said earlier, the fabric or whatever shrinks. So I'm going to make it an inch because it's just going to make my life easier. So I'll come over here and I'll find that inch mark right there. And now I'll draw a line, but I don't want to use this ruler. I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to draw a line from here to here. Now, if I just put this over the top of those two marks, when I go to draw this mark, my line's going to be about a line over because there's thickness on this pen. It's, it's not going to be able to lay down exactly right on the edge of this ruler. So I need to just back it up just a little. And I see that that looks good. Yeah. And so there, I've drawn that line all the way across. So here's this section. And I see that each one of these sections is the same. They're just rotated. So I'll measure one inch over here to make that mark. Uh, let's see, one inch over there and one inch over there. I can actually just count those squares. So let me go in here and I'm going to draw from here to here. If I get lost, I can always go back to this picture and say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, this is the center. I'm gonna draw from here down to here. So now I've got to draw this second one. And I see that this is about an inch over from this line. I look and see where is an inch over? Well, here is an inch over, right? here. I count it four over. That's an inch over. And if I line this up and then draw my line, I'll have this section completed. I'll go around and fill in the rest of these lines. Now I need to label my pieces. Before I forget, uh, let's see, this is called the shooting star. So let me put that name up there. I'm going to make this number one, this number two, and this number three. I'm not going to label these other ones because they're exactly the same as this. Each one of these sections have the same three pieces. Now in the last block that we sewed, we had rules for cutting out pieces. For example, if you want to cut out a rectangle, you add a half of an inch to the width and the length, and then you can cut it out. You don't need a template to cut it. You just need to know those rules. Well, for some blocks, you can do that. But for many more blocks, there are no special rules or tricks to cut out these pieces. If you want to make this shooting star block, you'll have to use templates. And you'll need a template for this piece, for this piece, and for this piece, when you make the template, you want to add seam allowance. And I try not to have it overlap another template. So let me show you what I mean. Here's template number one, and I'm going to put it down here. Number one, and I need to add a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around it. So let me back this up a little. I drew my quarter inch line. I'll draw my quarter inch line here. But what I'd like to do 
is make a dashed line like this because it makes it a little bit easier for me to see where those seam allowances are. But it is a little bit more difficult to draw. So here's this point right here, and I need to be a quarter inch over. So let me put that. And now I need to have a quarter inch off of this line. So I'm gonna put the ruler right over the top of that line, line it up, but then I need to back that up a little in order to draw my quarter inch. This piece comes around like this. So I'm going to put this ruler on that line. I'm going to back it up just a, just a tiny, tiny bit. And then I'll put in that dashed line. And you can see where I'm going to come up here. And this is where that dashed line is going to stop. And there's my template number one. I like to put little dots or registration marks because I use those dots to help me line everything up when I try to transfer this to template plastic. Okay, now I'm going to do number two. I think if I put two right here, that'll keep it out of the way. Come down. And I like to, I don't like to have a point here. I like to cut that off about a quarter of an inch. So here's this line right here, and you can see. That's going to go there. Here's this line up here. This is where I'll cut this one off. And now I need to put my dots in each one of the corners. And there is template number two. And for template number three, I'll do the same thing. You'll want to use a sturdy material to make your templates. Traditionally, that material has been cardboard. You would just glue this onto a piece of cardboard and then cut out around the dashed lines. You can also use what's called template plastic. Now this plastic comes frosted or clear like this, or you can buy it with a, a grid. Usually it's a quarter inch uh, graph paper grid on it. I don't like that because for me, it gets pretty confusing. I actually like this clear the best, but I'm this is the last piece I have of it. So I'll be using this frosted piece. In the last section in this video, you learned how to draw out your block on graph paper. If you chose not to draw it out, you'll find a pattern with templates already drawn for you. I'll be using this sheet to make my templates. So to get started, I'd like to make use of this nice clean corner here. So I'll turn my paper around and I'll put this down on top of that corner. I want to make sure that the template plastic is right over that line. You can take a pencil or marker on this template plastic. I like to use a pencil first and then come in and use the marker. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to see these lines okay because the, the dark is showing through. So the first thing I like to do is put my dots in because if this moves, if this were to move, I can line up everything with those dots. And then I take my ruler and I draw between those dots. You want to be right on that line so you might have to back it up a little. So I've drawn in all those lines and if I take my pen, if I take my finger, sometimes it erases those lines. Oh, that looks okay. So you have to be careful with the type of lead that you're using. And this is a cheaper pencil, but it seems to be okay. Later on, if I have problems, I go over that with a marker. So now you need to go around and trace all of those cutting lines. Make sure you're right on top of that line. And there's my template. So now I'm ready to cut. I'm using paper scissors. I'm right up against that line. So when I cut, it'll cut that line off. Don't use your rotary cutter for this because it will ruin your rotary blade. And don't use your good scissors for this because it'll ruin your good scissors. I actually have an old rotary cutter with an old blade that I use 
for cutting these templates out. Okay, so after it's been cut out, I want to put it over the top and see if I cut it um, properly all the way around. Now I have the 16th of an inch hole punch. I bought this a long time ago. They were very expensive, but now you can buy them for cheap um, at scrapbooking supply places. So I line this up with that little circle and I'm having a hard time seeing that. So I'm going to, I'm going to make it a little bit darker with this Sharpie so I can see it a little bit better. So here we go, and there it is. Now, if you don't have a hole punch, that's okay. You can use an awl, an ice pick, a really sharp needle to get to poke little holes in here. These act as what I call registration marks, and they really help if you find that you're getting out of whack where you can see where the problem is. So this template goes right there, and I'm going to turn it like this. The last thing you need to do on your temple is label it. So this is template number one, and I need to put the name of the block. It's a shooting star, six inches, because believe me, you get a bunch of these and they get mixed up and they, they can get lost. And then I like to put my initials on them because if I'm teaching a class or if I take this over to a friend's house and we've all got the same template, things can get mixed up. Another reason why I wrote on this side is because these templates are not reversible. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I turn this template over, it doesn't fit. That's because... There's only one correct way for this template to be, and it's in this direction. And that's true for each one of these pieces. Continue on making your templates. The thing that I wanted to point out to you is if you use this sheet instead of your drawing, when you print this sheet up, you want to make sure and check that this is exactly, this square right here is exactly one inch, and I can put this right over the top of it and line it up, that that's exactly one inch, because sometimes your printers are set at a, you know, 95%, 80%, there's different settings, and when you print this paper up, you won't print it exactly the way it's supposed to be print. So always check that, not just on this pattern, but on any pattern that you, that you have. One last thing about your templates. I just realized that I forgot to put the straight of grain lines on this pattern, so I'll take care of that in a minute. But let's go back to our original pattern, and you'll see that this template goes here, and straight of grain line is on this side. So I'd like to put that straight of grain line here so I know where to put that on the fabric. This one I put right here, and that straight of grain line goes here. And this last one is down here. That straight of grain line is in the corner. So these are all ready for cutting now. All of these templates will line up right on top of each other. If you have any problems with your sewing, you'll be able to use these to double check. Just a reminder that there's four of these sections in each one of these blocks. So you might want to add that onto your template that you need to cut four for each six inch star. Get in the habit of storing your templates as soon as you finish making them. You can use envelopes, Ziploc bags, or I like to use these page protectors because I can put my pattern in there and also add the templates. No matter which method you choose, always make sure that you store these flat. Once these get bent, they're usually no good. By now you might be saying, oh, I don't know about these templates. They seem to take a lot of time. 
But just remember, it's important to learn about different methods because you never know when they might come in handy. If you decide that templates just aren't your thing, you can always try using this paper piecing pattern or skip this block and find another star or fabric to fill in those spaces. But I hope you decide to step up to the challenge and try your hand with templates. In the next video, you'll get some tips on how to use your templates for marking your fabric, for cutting your fabric, and then for sewing your block together. Hope to see you soon. Thanks for visiting LearnHowToQuilt.com. We'd love to have you like, subscribe, and share our videos with your friends. Thanks.